بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the beneficent the merciful I bear witness that there is no god but Allah I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger Assalamu alaikum Brothers and sisters uh, it is great honor and privilege for me once again to have this opportunity to bear witness to the greatness of Allah and to thank him for raising the honorable Elijah Muhammad in our midst to guide us back to the straight path of Allah There are many who think that the honorable Elijah Muhammad has been guilty of shirk or unbelief There are many who in their understanding of Islam and their understanding of the Quran feel that Elijah Muhammad was not leading black people correctly particularly with respect to the faith of Islam or submission to the will of God Dear beloved brothers and sisters I would pray that you would reason with me If Elijah Muhammad was hated by this government the most powerful government on earth hated by his own people and opposed by the powerful and yet was successful yes, in the midst of his enemies yes, and never deviated from the path that he was put upon by the one who taught him i ask you is he guilty of unbelief no sir could unbelief produce belief no sir could unbelief produce righteous conduct no sir could unbelief produce a willingness on the part of those who listen to him to obey God and to make him the exclusive object of our worship I don't think so Today Louis Farrakhan as a student of the honorable Elijah Muhammad is now the subject of raging controversy yes, I have no fear by the grace of God of those who oppose me I have no concern that they will do me harm I lie down in peace at night and I wake up the same way though all around me are snarling vicious enemies am I also guilty of shirk no, sir. or unbelief no, sir. if I am a disbeliever or a misbeliever in God who sustains me yes, sir. and if you are a believer in God why are you falling yes, 
If I am a disbeliever in God and stand against the forces of the world and they do not prevail against me but I am prevailing against them then am I guilty of disbelief? How is your faith? when you capitulate to the forces of this world. How would you say your belief is when you bow down to things that are unworthy of you? My father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, did not teach me shirk. He did not teach me to be kafir or disbeliever or infidel. That's right. He taught me the law of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, bro. And that is what I intend to teach you today, the first law. And the first law that he gave us was to worship no God but Allah. Yes, sir. I don't have to go any further than the first law. Yes, sir, brother. Because with that law and that law alone, you have the power yes. to conquer all your enemies. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. In the Quran, in the very opening of the Quran, there are seven oft repeated verses. Every Muslim says these verses, this prayer, at least in a sequence of prayers five times a day but several times in a sequence of prayers this is the oft repeated prayer of all of the righteous and I would like to not deal with all seven verses which represent the quin essence of the book of God yes. containing all of the verses of the Quran in seven verses alone. Though there are thousands of verses in the Quran, all of them are contained in seven verses. Before we even say the first verse of the Quran, we must say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The translators say that it means, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. But the scholars say that you cannot translate properly Arabic into English so easily. Yes, sir. So this Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim which every Muslim begins every act yes. with these words. He opens his eyes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. He partakes of food. He enters relations of all kinds in the name of God. Think over that. But the scholars say that it means with the help of or with the assistance of the Lord of creation. Now think about this. When I opened up speaking to you, I opened up asking for the assistance of the Creator. Yes. That means that I understand as Jesus understood when He said, I can of myself do nothing then if Jesus said he could of himself do nothing, then every act 
that he entered into, he called for the assistance of his father. So if Jesus were here today speaking, he wouldn't say, hi guys. Glad to see you again. He would say, Bismillah. Rahim. I speak in the name of God with the help of God. For I can do nothing without his help. But with his help, there is nothing that I am not able to do. But there are Christians and Muslims and Hebrews and atheists and agnostics. The prerequisite to greatness in the divine sense of greatness. And when I say the divine sense of greatness, when God bestows greatness on an individual, that greatness is not temporal. Meaning it is not in the limits of the time. But when God bestows greatness on an individual, that greatness is outside of the bounds of the finite time of the life of that individual. But the greatness of that individual extends beyond his or her time into the times of others. And sometimes for hundreds and thousands of years, the name of that individual is honored and remembered because they have attained to true greatness. True greatness is only that which comes with the assistance of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Now, when one aspires to serve God, the Lord of the worlds, and to serve Him alone, and I must add that second part to it, not serving him with somebody else but serving him alone associating nothing with him understanding that he is singular he is matchless he is unique and incomparable and has no associates has no rivals or no partners is above need of his creatures and all creation is independent of all but upon whom all are made to depend when one comes into the knowledge of such being and commits oneself to worship that being and that being alone that one is on the path of true greatness. That one is on the path of conquering not some obstacles, but all obstacles that lie in the pathway of man's becoming one with his creator. So a Muslim, a righteous person, doesn't do anything without God's assistance. Praying for his help. Seeking his aid. So the Quran opens. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Why? Why seek his assistance? Because you and I were created in need and weak. Therefore when something is created in need and weak. Coming into the world knowing nothing and helpless, that individual coming into the world needs assistance. So before you call out for help, help is there. So God gives every new life a mother. A mother to assist it in its development. But woe to the child who doesn't grow up from the worship of mother. Though when you're a child you worship your mother, that can be accepted from you. It can be tolerated by the God. But when you grow to an age 
where you understand that your mother is not the source of whatever she gives. That you must now escape your mother. Escape your father and find the source of it all. For you are not justified in worshiping your mother. Yes, sir. You are not justified in worshiping your father. Yes, sir. You are not justified in worshiping your prophets or your messengers or your kings or your rulers. Right. You are only justified in worshiping him who is the source of your very existence. So you are required by the very nature in which you are created to search for him. And he gives you signs so that you won't get lost along the highway of life. Praise be to Allah. He creates life and he makes it filled with vicissitudes and trials and tribulations. Yeah, right. This is all a part of the journey that you may search for him. Yeah. He's not satisfied to make it easy for you to find him. He wants you to long for him. Yeah. He wants your soul to cry out for him. Yeah. And even though mother can satisfy you for a while, Father can satisfy you for a while. Preacher may satisfy you for a while. Mayor and governor and president may satisfy you for a while. Prophet and messenger may satisfy you for a while. But God don't want you stopping on the road. For all of these are but signs on the road. You got to come all the way up to your meeting with him. And I will meet with him. The soul of the human being yearns to meet with its creator. Of which the essence of the soul has its repository in the creator and emanated from the creator and longs to return to the creator. Think over these things. So God doesn't allow you in life yes, to get comfortable. Yes, he makes it uncomfortable. When you get comfortable, he disturbs your comfort. Yes, when you feel you got it under control, he busts up your control. Yes, when you think you know, he shakes the yes, foundation of what you think you know, that he may rattle you and shake you so that you will keep on the journey. Yes, Keep on the journey to him. So many of us on a journey stop before we reach the goal. Climbing a mountain is not easy. Sometimes you have to stop and get a rest, but don't stay there. Right. Elijah was up in a mountain. And somebody asked him, what do it thou here? You got work to do. So many of us long for comfort. And when we find a measure of comfort, we want to rest there. But the soul of man is constantly disturbed. Yes, right. Even though you may be high from heroin or right. cocaine or alcohol, yes. even in your high, he disturbs your soul yes, that the reefer can't satisfy. Yes, the heroin can't reach it to comfort it. Your woman can't reach it. The man you love can't reach it to comfort it. Because he don't want you to find total comfort in a man or in a woman. He wants you to find your rest in him. Yeah. Yeah. So when 
the trials of life disturb you when they shake that comfortable position that makes life easier for you it's only because God is beckoning you to come closer come closer there is no rest in your companionship with each other because I have made you the creator talking I have made you imperfect because the very root of the universe out of which you were made is not perfect it is groaning as it moves toward perfection so since you are made imperfect I can only compensate for your imperfection by giving you a law that demands your constant attention your constant obedience I must help you to fall in love with my law because my law as David says is a lamp unto my feet but sometimes I'll allow you to walk in darkness so that you can hunger for the light and I'll bring the law to you my servant and if you will love the law and meditate on the law night and day and understand that I didn't give you law to burden you but I gave you law to compensate for the imperfection of your nature so that you might through the law relate perfectly to me and through the law you might relate perfectly to one another and in your interpersonal relationships when you stumble with one another through the law and repentance and forgiveness and mercy you can find peace with each other but your soul cannot find the peace that it seeks in your companionship your soul yearns for its creator so beloved the Quran opens the first verse saying praise be to Allah the Lord of all the worlds why must you know where praise belongs because if God is going to aid you in an endeavor he can make you successful as Brother Khaled said, my father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, said of me that I would reach the pinnacle of success of this world's life. Yeah. But the rest of that, Brother Khaled, is, and when you get there, brother, I hope you will remember yeah. who brought you there. Yeah. That's the balance. Because you can't get there by yourself. Somebody assists you to become great. And if you become great, young man, remember you got there with help. So the first verse of the Quran teaches the lesson of humility. Because God cannot make a people great who are arrogant, proud, self-conceited. I reflected this morning upon my life. There are moments when every human being must stop and take stock of self. And I looked at black people and I looked at black people through looking at my life. We are born into a loveless world. Yet our souls need love to feed on, to grow 
properly with balance because the creator who created us loves his creation. When a child comes into the world and can't find love, it seeks love. You know? We want to be appreciated. We want to feel like we're justified in being where we are because we have a sense of belonging. But when a child grows up not feeling that it is loved, it must follow trying to find love. Yes, sir. I grew up like that, not knowing my father. But all the children had fathers. I imagine. Go ahead and teach, brother minister. But I had a mother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A mother that I didn't learn to love until I was a much older man because I couldn't understand the way she demonstrated love. Yes, sir. I had a need to be held. I had a need for that kind of love and affection and tenderness that only a loving mother can give to a child that rests in its bosom. My mother never knew love. She had a mother, according to her words to me, that never showed her love so it is difficult to give what you never had that's why Farrakhan talks so much of love because he needed it so bad that when he finally found it he understood it and knows that it's what human beings need. It is the bomb to heal the affliction of black people. You can't heal black people with money. You don't heal black people with jobs. You don't heal black people with an abundance of knowledge. Because those that know and those that work and those that have money and those that have comfort are still sick internally. They're sick and yearning. Diana Ross is famous and beautiful, but her soul is uncomfortable. The refrigerator is big and beautiful, but his soul is not comforted by fame. It's not comforted by fortune. There's something missing in the black man's life. Since the essence of God is love, and the soul of God is the soul of man, it longs to be loved, to be appreciated. Then when a man can't find love and he finds out that he can sing, she can sing, he can dance, he can play ball, he can fight, he can do these things that will give him appreciation. Then he gives up everything. But at the core, all the soul wants is love. So I forsook my life for my music. Yes, sir. My violin was my only reason for existing. So for eight, nine, and ten hours a day as a young boy, while the others were playing football and basketball and playing games with the girls, I had no time for that because my soul longed to be loved. 
And I found a way to express the love longing of my soul through my music. So I spoke through my music. And I became good at what I did. I worked too hard not to be. So when I got married, I didn't know how to give my wife the duty of a real husband. Because a wife satisfied a human need, a biological need, and a psychological need, but she never could go deep enough to satisfy the soul because the soul longs for God. You've got to understand what's happening in your life. So men look like they're selfish. They look like they don't care, sisters. But it's not that they don't care. Their soul is in flight searching for something that you can never give a man. And not a woman born that can rest a man's soul. His soul can only rest in his creator. And it's not a man born that can rest a woman's soul. Her soul can only rest in the creator. Oh yes. So unless God is in your life, you soon tire of each other. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Unless the worship of the creator is real in your life, you soon become disenchanted with each other. When I found my Lord, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I found what I was looking for. Listen to me good now. You mean he's God? Hold it right there. I found a father that I never had. I found somebody that loved black people more than any other being I had ever known. And I found in him a truth that satisfied my soul. But the more I grew, and the more I understood, the more I knew that I had to go past my teacher to the source. There my soul could rest. He didn't teach me to take him as a God beside Allah. He didn't teach me to worship him. He said, follow me. Follow me. And he said, to Allah alone do I submit and seek refuge. There comes a time in the life of a man of God where he must give pain to those around him. Not that he gives them pain, but circumstances of his life gives them pain. But if he's to grow into the pure worship of God, he cannot emotionally get caught up in the pain of those whom he loves. He must grow beyond their pain to see what does God want. <laughs> Elijah Muhammad was that kind of man. And that's why he was so successful. I want to be that kind of man. Yes, sir. Not because I want to be that because I want to be great. I want to be that because that's the only way you can survive in an adverse world. You cannot set up a partner or a rival with God. You in the white man's world. But the white man is only a temporary power. You can't bow down to him. You can't make him think he's a God beside God simply because he has some power in his hand that he don't have any control over. You got to find God and don't rest until you do. For when you find him, then you're free at last. 
free at last. <laughs> so the Muslim says, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Praise be to Allah. Notice in your first verse of the Quran, you don't say praise be to my mother. Praise be to my father. Praise be to my teacher. Praise be to my sister or my brother. Praise be to the prophet or the messenger or the king or the ruler. You got your focus on one. Praise be to Allah. Then you get a comma there. Then our, the, the God wants to describe who you are praising. The Lord of the worlds. He who originates the thing. <laughs> and after he originates the creation, he nurtures the creation and makes it evolve, attaining stage after stage until it reaches its eventual perfection. Before my mother knew she was pregnant with me, Allah knew it. Mama didn't know when the sperm met the egg and turned into a drop of blood, the first cell, and began revolving and rotating in the darkness of the womb. Yes. She didn't know. Yes, sir. But her power was there, yes. causing the spinning to take place. Yes, sir. That is Allah. Yes, sir. He was with me when I was sperm. Yes. He was with me when sperm met the egg. Yes. Yes. He was with me when I was a clot. He was with me when I became an embryo and then a fetus. And he was with me when I came to birth and called out and took the first breath of life. There was God's presence. So who do I owe? My life to I don't owe my life to my mother. Though I thank God for my mother. I can't follow my mother unless my mother is right. I don't owe my life to my father. Though the sperm emitted from him, I owe my life to him who originated sperm and over. I owe my life to him who originated the womb and created the desire in my father for my mother and the desire in my mother for my father and gave both of them the organs of reproduction. I owe my life to him who originated the creation and who made it possible for me to be nurtured from my mother's breast. He is one singular and alone. He has no partners. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. He's the Lord of the worlds. The Muslim is made to say it again. Rahman and Rahim. The beneficent, the merciful. Yes, then he's made to say, Maliki Yawmiddin. Yes. He's the master, right. not the judge, right. not the king. Listen. He's the master of the law yes. of sowing and reaping. Yes. He has the power that if you sow a bad seed, he can come in between the sowing and the reaping and show you some mercy there. 
He can allow you to reap a little of what you sow, even though you deserve all of what you sow. He's the master. Master of the law of requital. He's the master of the dean. He's the master of the religion. He's the master of the nature. Not only the nature of you, but the nature of all things. Who else should I worship? Who should I bow down to? Who should I fear? Who should make me tremble? The white man looked like a lump of nothing to me. With his nuclear child's play. You worship him if you want to. But he wasn't present in the beginning. He has a power that he has to rely on. Why should I then fear the Jews if I speak the truth? I don't care nothing about what you like. Black leaders trembling and shaking in their boots. Take it easy, Farrakhan. Take it easy for what? Slow down, Farrakhan. Slow down for what? Slow down. Pick up. We 430 years late. Why should any Negro leader want Farrakhan to slow down when the people are in hell? What is the matter with you sinister demon beings calling yourself preachers of the word of God? You are nothing but a damnable group of wicked hypocrites. You don't know God. That's why you want me to slow down. Then no, you slow down, but be sure to sit down. Because my God has stood me up. I cannot make Elijah Muhammad any rival or equal to God. For Elijah didn't create me. The God created me for him. <laughs> he created me in answer to his servant's prayer. So I cannot, in my allegiance, focus only on the servant that I am born to help in the mission. But I must focus on the God who made me genetically and put in my genes that which you hear coming from me. I bow down to Allah. I worship Allah. He has no equal, no rival, no partner, no successor. He's master of the day of judgment. When you recite all of these attributes of grandeur, you come to the fourth verse, which is the foundation upon which you must stand if you want victory. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Be alone. Do we worship? 
worship. Yes. Thee alone do we beseech yes. for help. Yes, That's it. That's, right. That's the first law there. Right. Yes, sir. Now after you know God, yes. know of his majesty and his greatness, then you got to make up in your mind it's you alone that are the object of my worship. Nothing else besides you. And it is you alone that I'm looking to for help. So that when all other help fails, like David, I will say, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hill from whence cometh my help, my help cometh. From the Lord. David had a lot of people around him. But he could not rely on them. He had to rely on the help from him. Whom he said, thee alone do I serve. And to thee alone do I beseech for help. That's the law. That's the number one law of a Muslim. Yes, sir. Worship no God. But Allah. Allah, dear Christian brothers and sisters, is the proper name of God. The proper name of God. It cannot be applied to any being. Only the one true originator of the heavens and the earth. All the perfect names and attributes, they are his. When you say Jehovah... You're only saying the self-existent God. And that one by whom all things exist, that is an attribute. When you say the beneficent, the merciful, the mighty, the wise, the powerful. You know, that these are attributes. But when you want to say it all in one name, you say Allah. Thee alone do we serve. Thine aid do we seek. Yes, I'm going to stop right there on that verse and complete my subject because I promised myself. <laughs> that I was not going to keep you long. Yes, sir. And verily, he always breaks his mouth. <laughs> No, <laughs> I must get it over in the next few minutes. Worship no God but Allah. Yes, sir. Beloved, that's power. Yes, Don't make any graven image. Yes, sir. Don't do that. Don't make any statues. Yes, sir. Don't do that. Yes, Don't bow down and worship nothing yes, sir. but him. Yes, sir. Dear Catholics, I can't follow you. See, Mary can't help me. She may be the mother of Jesus, but she need help herself. And when Mary was hit with fainting and pain, she didn't call on Jesus. He was in the womb. She didn't say, Jesus, help me. She said, Lord, oh Allah, deliver me. Strengthen me. She made her worship clear. How come you now make Mary a God beside God? Holy Mary, mother of God. How could she be God's mother? You mean she was in existence before God? Then where was she when the heavens and the earth were stretched? You want to worship Mary? Talk to me. 
you wicked hypocrites. Catholic hypocrite. You gonna worship Mary? Well, if you did, then why don't I see that same worship and respect for women? You disrespect Mary and you disrespect women and you do it in the name of God. Oh, St. Michael and St. Thomas. Oh, St. Jude. In this piece of stone standing up there looking at you with his hands out like this. And you bowing. If I go to the Catholic Church tonight and pull down every statue and bust it up, go grab the statue of Jesus off the altar and break it into a hundred pieces, then slip out unnoticed. The next morning I meet the Father. I say, Father, let's go to Mass. He go in and say, my God! <laughs> Who would do a thing like this in the house of God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would look at the Father and say, ask the statue. It should be able to tell you. <laughs> If the statue can't tell you, then why bow down to the statue? If I was in here last night, I could tell you who did. Because I can see and I can hear. That statue can't see or hear or feel. What are you doing praying to it? Don't you realize you degrade yourself praying to a statue? You can't get no power praying to stone. That's why you're a powerless group of Christians right now. Listen to me, Christian. Don't get angry. I love Christ. Yes, sir. But you are totally powerless. That's right, brother. Powerless. Because Jesus Himself called on the Father. He never told you to worship Him. Right. He told you follow him. Yes. You have done neither. You didn't worship nor follow. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you just all messed up in the name of Jesus. Yes. You just all messed up in the name of Jehovah. Yes. Just a group of powerless, namby pamby people. Yes. No guts. No backbone. No will to live and die for what you really believe in. Come Don't talk so hard. The white people said to kill you. I wouldn't be the first. I do believe I'd be the last. Thee alone do we serve. Yes. In this life, there's always things pulling at you. I'm going to conclude. To make you worship. Yes, sir. My Lord, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to me one day, he said, music is a God, brother. Yes, listen. It'll make you bow down. Yes, sir. <laughs> and in truth, Music demands. You want to be a musician, you got to put time. That's right. Well, God also demands. That's right. I mean, you got time for your music, you don't have no time for the Creator. You mean you're going to get up and play, but don't get up and pray? 
Think about that. Think about it. The priorities are all messed up. Sleep is a god. Powerful force. I watch people fight sleep. Yes, sir. Watch a baby sometime when the baby really wants to stay up and check everything out. You, know? you just keep going, the baby keep going. After a while, you see. Sleep make you bow, boy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Won't sleep make you bow? Yes, sir. <laughs> but the Muslim says, Assalamu Khairun Mina now. Prayer is better than sleep. A Muslim is called upon in the middle of his sleep, break your sleep and get up and worship God. You know, God is something. He don't like you to get attached to nothing but him. You know, that scripture is kind of true, you know. The Lord, that God, I'm a jealous God. I didn't understand that at one time, you know. Then why are you going to make God jealous? Put him on such cheap, common level as a human being. He said, now ain't this something I created this thing? And he gonna make something else God beside me. I don't like that. Poor thing, he just don't know better. When I get finished with him, he'll learn. <laughs> so you in the deep of your sleep, and you know when you sleep, and you really sleep, and you really needed it, and boy, it's so good. I mean, you just into it, curl up. Yeah. <laughs> and the alarm goes off. Ding, ding. Get up, it's time for prayer. Yeah. Say, oh God, come on. <laughs> Hell, I'll get to you later. Leave me alone. Let me sleep. But he said, no, no, no. You need sleep to live. To get strength to rest but you need me more than you need sleep yes. I am your rest young man yes. get up and don't make sleep greater than I yes. can you imagine me as a singer I love you baby <laughs> the Sun don't set on you Can you imagine that? <laughs> I love you, baby. Mm -hmm. The sun don't set on you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> Can you imagine me singing something like that to you, sister? You look at me and say, what the hell is wrong with that man? <laughs> you sit there and you lap all that up. Sing to me, honey. <laughs> Just sing to me, baby. <laughs> you know that nigga's crazy. <laughs> and I don't know what I would do without you. Lord, come back to me, baby. Please don't leave me, child. <laughs> don't leave me, please. <laughs> oh, James Brown would pull it, wouldn't it? <laughs> baby, please don't go. Baby, baby, please don't. And you sitting in the audience. I wish God bust every damn tooth out of my mouth. 
If I dare put you up on that kind of pedestal, you can't handle that, sister. And you don't love no man that worships you. Any man that makes you a god. I just love you, baby, so much. I just can't do without you. When you start talking like that, you say, hmm, I can do without him. <laughs> Thee alone do we worship. Thine aid do we seek. Can you imagine this great big man? Look at you. Cigarette in his pocket. Wish the minister would stop. <laughs> it's been two hours I ain't had a cigarette. Jesus Christ. I got to have a cigarette, Jesus. Maybe I'll just make them think I'm going to the bathroom, but I got to get the hell out of here. I got a cigarette. white piece of paper surrounded by some tobacco and you buy down to eat cigarettes <laughs> I was in show business I saw a white boy one day I seen him crying I didn't know why he was crying he was in the band I said what's the matter man <laughs> <laughs> I said, good God, what's wrong with you? He said, I, I don't want to do I don't want to do that. He opened the car. He said, I don't want to do that. He ran in the glove compartment, busted the cap. And <laughs> I said, oh, hell, that's what you looking for? <laughs> alone do we serve you wicked fool you wasn't created in the world needing reefer needing heroin needing to snort white lady the heroin wasn't present when you were formed now you need heroin and you rob your mother and kill your sister for some damn drug. But if a man will say, I worship no God but Allah, he's free of that cold turkey, you can bust it. I am telling you, you can bust it cold turkey, man. Brother Abdul Jabbar, stand up, brother. He's a man that's been on heroin for years. But when he decided to give it up, he didn't say, I need to withdraw. Uh, somebody help me. He said, I bear witness there's no God but Allah. Is that right, Brother Jabbar? I can't stand a man that worships a woman. Because I know what she'll do for you. And I can't stand no woman that worship her husband to the point where he'll make her a prostitute, a drug addict, anything of ill repute, she'll do it just to please him. Men are making chumps out of you all every day because you can't get control of your biology. But when did the urge for sex precede the urge to worship God? I just need you, darling. I need you so bad. Get the hell down on your prayer rug. You need God in your life. You need God in your life. I need some money. That's what I need in my life. I need some money to pay my rent. God ain't going to give that to me. What the hell am I going to worship God for? I need money. I hear you. What is money? See if I got any. 
had to dig deep to get that dollar. <laughs> I'm all right, brothers and sisters. What is that, man? Ain't nothing but a piece of paper, brother. Made from wood. Puff. With some ink on it. A dead cracker on it. That's right. Some numbers on it. Some symbols on it. And you're going to kill flesh and blood over some damn paper. Look at me. You crazy as hell. And get you a gun. Stick him up! What you need, man? I need some money. Not running all out your damn nose. Hands shaking. I give you the money, brother. You don't have to kill me for no damn piece of paper. Then let some cracker judge put you in jail for the rest of your natural life over some damn paper! It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's the fault of this crooked world. It's the fault of the damn preachers. The teachers. Who don't know nothing about God. But claim to teach about a God that they don't know. And afraid to trust. Yes, 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 yes. But if you taught God to the people, yes. all you had to do is teach them to worship God alone and leave them alone. The rest will come. Yes, right. <coughs> yes, right. That's why the wise man said the beginning of wisdom yes. is the knowledge of God. Yes. Thee alone do we serve. Yes. Thine aid we seek. Mm -hmm. And so, beloved, I say to you, Allah does not want us to love things or people more than your love for him. He will test your love until it is pure. He will listen. He will test your love until it is pure. And he will test it after it is pure to make sure that it's still pure. I'm almost finished. Just bear with me. Just come a moment. Some of you, you love your mates so much. That when they die, you want to die. Oh, my, my wife died. Oh, God, I can't carry on. I must die, too. You want the whole world to think you really loved them. Damn hypocrite. Did you come in the world with her? You didn't? Was she there in the womb? When the sperm met the egg, she wasn't there then. She wasn't there when you came out of your mother's womb. You didn't come in here with her as a twin, did you? Oh, well, hell, since you came alone, you can go alone. Since you came alone, you can walk alone. Since you came alone, you don't need nobody by your side. But God, he is sufficient for you all. Excuse me for hollering. You are tested by love and you are tested by life and you are tested by death. God wants to know, do you love these things more than I? 
He wants to know, do you love your life more than you love me who gave you life? God wants to know. He said to Abraham in the Quran, he says to Abraham, I am going to make you a leader of men. But he wouldn't make him a leader of men until he had tried Abraham with certain commands. The Quran does not tell you what the commands were. But when God gives you a command, sometimes it's, it's, it's so distant from what you want to do. It's all outside of the bent of your mind, out of your psyche sometimes. You, you, you know, he asked you to do something totally what you would call outrageous. Oh, God would do that. Just a minute, Farrakhan. You're just talking about God, what you don't know. Shut up. Just shut up. Be quiet. Listen a little bit, will you? Abraham was named Abram. God want to make him Abraham. God want to make him a prophet. God wanted to make him a father of a nation. You can't be the father of a nation punked out. Not a, not a great nation. Not a nation that's going to be of consequence. Not a nation that's going to have longevity. God said, Abraham, Sarah can't bear no children. He said, she sure can't. But I want a son, God. He said, well, take Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar, go into her, she'll give you a child. Mm, that's all right. Thank you, God. I knew you would help me out. Sarah brings him a child. The Quran calls him Ishmael. The Bible calls him Isaac. The Quran is correct. Oh, Ishmael, he loved Ishmael so much. Ishmael was the apple of his eye. God let him love Ishmael. God let him nurture Ishmael. God let him rear Ishmael. When Ishmael got to a certain age, God said, mm -hmm. How you doing, Abe? I'm doing fine, God. Thank you so much for this beautiful son. He said, You love him, don't you? He said, Yes, sir, I love him. He's Take him up on the mountain and sacrifice him there for me. Yes. What did you say? <laughs> now wait just a minute, God. I can hear him now. But God, that's murder. My son didn't do nothing to justify that. I mean, why would you have me kill my own flesh and blood? I cried to you for him. I begged you for him. I asked you to give him to me. You even allowed me to go into my wife's handmaid. My wife made me put the woman out in the wilderness, but I got a son now. You want me to kill the child? You love me, Abraham? Yeah, yeah I think I, yeah, I love you. I'm, I, I think I do. I ain't so sure now. See all that I love you talk? Don't mean a damn thing until it's tested. I love you. Go up on the mountain, Abraham, and sacrifice your son. Abraham says, all right, God. I'm sure he wrestled with God. He's a natural human being. He wrestled, but God won out. Some of the scholars say that Satan met Ishmael on the way up the mountain and said, Ishmael, your father told you he's taking you up there and they're going to sacrifice a, 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 a sheep or lamb up there to God. He said, but Ishmael, ain't no lamb up there, it's you. You still want to go, Ish? And then she turned around and looked at Satan and said, get thee behind me. If that's what God want my father to do, that's what I'm willing to do. Now that's a son willing to die for the glory of God. That's a father willing to kill for the glory of God. Them two are together. And that's why when you read Abraham, you read Ishmael. 
And when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundation of the house, God can't make a covenant with you or through you unless you're willing to give up your life for him. You want to hold on to your life and I love you, God. But just don't make no demand on me. Don't try me. So take him up on the mountain. When they got up on the mountain, the book says that he said, son, Son said, Daddy, I don't see no sheep around here, no lamb. Said, no, son, you the sheep. You the lamb. He said, well, I am willing. And the son willingly laid himself down on the altar to become a sacrifice for the love of God. So when Abraham raised the knife to plunge it into his son's heart, God stayed his hand and said, Abraham, it's all right. It's all right, Abraham. I know that it is me alone that you want to serve. You don't love your son more than me. You don't love life more than me. Abraham, now I'm going to make a covenant with you. Now I'm going to make an agreement with you and your seed. Because yes, both of you are worthy. Yes, because you have said, thee alone do we serve. Yes, and thine aid we seek. Yes, Beloved, in my conclusion, the whole story of Jesus is the fulfillment of Abraham and Ishmael. A father produces a son. The father loves the son. But the father is willing to sacrifice the son for the sake of a people that he wants to redeem. And the son says, I'm willing to be sacrificed. So the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would have eternal life. What does it mean? God don't love this world. God wouldn't give a righteous son to save this world. But I'm going to tell you something. God loves you, a people that have been destroyed by the world. Yes. A people who have never been loved. In your life, in this world, nobody has really shown you the love that your soul yearns for that is a bomb for your condition. So God so loved you that he raised from among you one that would give his all for you. Yes, right. yeah. I'm telling you, yes, that one is the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, that man worked yes. 44 years yes. out of his life for you. Yes. He challenged white people for your sake. He ran in the wilderness from enemies for your and my sake. He went to jail for your and my sake. He suffered and was bruised and there was no guile in his mouth, no deceit in the man. He wept for you. And when he knew that the time would catch him. That he only could stay among us 40 years. And the job could have taken 40 days, but the people were so rebellious. So he prayed for an Ada. One who would share his burden. 
One who had a heart after him. One who would be willing to go down into hell and snatch the devil and rip his tongue out for the sake of the freedom of the people. One that would worship God and worship him alone and don't set up no rival, no partner with him because that's the only way he could win. And he used to say to me, I saw a man climbing up the mountain late in the evening, yeah. carrying a heavy load. And he would say, Lord, when will my help come? And finally, when he got to the top of the mountain, carrying his heavy load, he said, Hosanna, Hosanna, my help is come. And he said, and the angels came and bore him away over the dashing foam. The mountain that was climbed is a mountain called America. He said, the Savior said, I will climb a mountain 40 miles high just to teach one lost found. My father climbed a mountain 40 years up till he got one. And I am that one. I have been hated, rebuked, scorned, rejected, plotted against. But Elijah Muhammad remained the object of my eye. The God of Elijah is the only one now who can sustain me. So in my infancy and my ignorance, I paid lip service to Allah while I worshipped Elijah Muhammad. But now that I'm out on the road, I can't call on my Lord. I got to call on his Lord, the Lord of the world, because I'm in trouble. I am in trouble. I have taught the truth, and I'm in trouble. The white people don't like me. The Jews don't like me. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, he's sufficient. That's the point. What I want to paint is the president censured me. The vice president censured me. The senate censured me. There's a bill before the congress to censure me. The city council censured me. The state legislature of California censured me. The city council of Los Angeles censured me. The governor repudiated me. And I don't care. Why don't you care, Farrakhan? Because we alone do I serve. And you, my God, ain't Reagan. My God is not the Senate. My God is not the mayor, nor the city council. My God is not the power of America or the power of her guns. My God is the power that controls it all. He's the master of the nature of it. So since I know him, so the scripture said, to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Who will believe our report? Yeah. Believe it. Because yeah. when God reveals his arm to you, you see his power. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you don't fear nobody else's power. People say that fire can't think he's a superman. No, but I believe in a super God. Yeah. So I went to Washington at the Kennedy Center 
and told all the black leaders, mm -hmm. if you're afraid of the white man, then stand back. I take him on by myself. I ain't asking none of you come with me. I didn't ask none of you for your help. I take this beast on by myself with the help of God. In the name of Allah, with the assistance of Allah. If Paul said, if God be for you, who can be against you? Evidently, God must be for me if all these white folks is against me and some of you. And yet, I will not fear. David says, I will not fear the arrow that flieth by day. Or the one that cometh by night, for I am shadowed under the wings of the Almighty, the alone do we serve, and thine aid we seek. The first law that must be obeyed is to worship no God but Allah. Not your mother, right. not your father, right. Right. not your sister, right. not your brother, right. not your wife or your uncle, yeah. not your business or your possessions, yeah. Yeah. not your own life. Yeah. Yes, sir, Jesus said, if you do not hate your mother, right. your father, yeah. That's right. your sister, your yeah. brother, yea, even your own life. Right. For my sake, you are not worthy of me. What was Jesus saying? God demands it all. He don't ask you to give nothing. Two, you don't want two thirds. I give you a third, God. Two thirds, I'm gonna hold for myself. What you say? Oh, okay, I give you a half. Then. Wait a minute, don't whoop me. All right, all right. I get three quarters. Mm. <laughs> he said, no, baby. Yes, listen. I want it all. Because yes. I gave it all. Yes, sir. I want it all. Yes. I didn't give you in part. I gave you all you got. I gave it to you. Don't you give me back no 10%. I want it all. I want your prayer, I want your sacrifice. I want your life, I want your death. The first law, love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. I want it all. There is no God but me, he said. Thee alone do we serve. The first law is worship one God, Allah. Thank you for listening. All praise is due to Allah. We should be on our way out of here in the next 10 minutes. Thank you for bearing with me. Thank you.